Hey there, Alex here. The LG V series has always been about power user features. Removable battery, expandable storage, great audio quality, a funky display setup, and an impressive set of camera features. The V30 Plus is still mostly that. Other than losing that second display for a taller screen, and trading the removable battery in for a more weatherproof IP68 rating. So it looks a bit prettier now, and it's a little more grown up. Okay, it's not really just a bit prettier. I mean, just look at it. It's a gorgeous looking phone that puts the Galaxy Note 8 to shame, and Samsung could really learn from LG the correct place to put a rear fingerprint sensor. The front of the phone is just as stunning to look at with those slim bezels around the 6 inch POLED 18x9 display. The issues that you've heard about at nauseum on the internet are mostly true, but definitely exaggerated. Unless you're very particular about display quality, it's still a good looking screen. While the hardware design is pretty spot on, the software design is still pretty LG. Ugly looking animations, plenty of LG software I'll never use, and just generally weird design choices around the interface. I definitely see improvements over past LG software, and some of the annoying things can be turned off. But at the glacier pace that they are moving, it's going to take a while for them to catch up to Samsung. That's really unfortunate because in terms of hardware design, they are pretty much neck and neck now. Like most overzealous manufacturers, the software comes with quite a bit of additional features, most of them I would probably never use. Like this floating bar that replaces the secondary display on previous V-series phones. It is supposed to provide quick access to shortcuts, but ends up feeling more clunky instead. There are genuinely useful features, like the ability to add a button to pull down the notification shade, double tap to wake or sleep, using a knock code to unlock the phone while it's on my desk, or having an always-on display that shows me all my notifications. With the V30 Plus, LG has also refined the software to work better with the wider expect ratio. It's not perfect still, but it's definitely better than it was on the G6. So if you can live with the way the software looks, or you're planning to use a launcher on the phone anyway, it's not exactly a terrible experience. The software performance is pretty much what you would expect from a flagship device too. Like most flagship Android phones, it's a pretty standard looking spec sheet here. Even though 4GB of RAM doesn't sound as impressive anymore, I haven't run into any situations where I felt like I needed more. Same thing with the 3300mAh battery, which doesn't sound like much for a phone this size. But it is actually decent enough to get me through a day of use quite easily. A bigger battery would be nice of course, but the phone is slimmer and lighter than other similar devices, which makes it less tiring to use one-handed. It does support fast charging and wireless charging, so even if you're a super heavy user, it's not that difficult to keep the phone topped up throughout the day. There are a few interesting hardware features on the V30+. Plus. First is the quad deck that we've seen on a couple of past LG devices already, which pumps out higher fidelity audio. It's rare enough to find a headphone jack on a phone these days, and even rarer that so much emphasis has been placed on it. Even with a basic pair of headphones, it's not hard to tell how much better this sounds over your typical smartphone. The second interesting hardware feature is the haptic feedback. Unlike the crude feeling vibrator motto in most Android phones, the feedback you get on the V30 Plus feels great. It's precise and subtle. Little things like the feedback you get when you're scrolling through the dials in a camera app, or that click when capturing an image. It's not a deal breaker feature, but it's a much appreciated upgrade that adds to the premium feel of the phone. Next interesting feature is of course the ultra wide angle camera. This time round, it's not only slightly higher resolution, but also has a wider aperture. LG has also managed to reduce the barrel distortion that normally comes with lenses like this, making it look better than ever before. For me, I still find a wide-angle setup to be more fun to use compared to other dual-camera setup, and the V30 Plus has the best implementation yet. Which transitions us nicely into the main camera, which is a pretty impressive shooter too. In full auto mode, the camera is generally pretty good at producing good-looking shots with natural-looking colours and nice details. It's not quite at the level of phones like the Google Pixel 2 with its insane HDR processing, but this is still a camera that I've really enjoyed using and I think most people would too. I have the full resolution samples in the video description below, so be sure to check them out. The highlight of the camera though, other than the wide angle camera, is really just a plethora of modes, features and effects that you can get from the camera app. Some of the fun modes from the G6 are still here too. Then you get one of the best manual modes out of the box. 
I'm not just talking about images, but videos too. On top of that, you also get a bunch of color grading presets that you can use on the go. If those are not your jam, you can even shoot in a cine log mode to preserve as much dynamic range as possible if you want to do your own color grading. One feature I really like is this smooth zoom feature which lets me select an area for the camera to slowly crop into. This is still digital zoom of course, and video editing software would probably be able to achieve a similar effect. But if you're just looking to share content quickly while on the go, it works well enough. Which is the same story with all the power user features in the camera app. In terms of outright quality, most content creators would probably still go with a dedicated camera setup, but those are typically pretty cumbersome to carry around. What the V30 Plus offers is the mobility and freedom to create more professional looking content and sharing them on the go, and I think that's a legit value proposition. What is not so great though is the front facing camera. It's a wide angle camera too, and while it's decent enough in good lighting, it can struggle a little in dimmer lighting conditions. Some power users would probably be pretty upset with LG abandoning removable battery on the V30 Plus, but for me, I think it's worth the trade-off for a more weather-resistant phone. That probably allowed LG to finally just go all in for the design of the phone, resulting in not just a feature-packed device, but also one of the best-looking phones in the market this year. While things like the quad deck, ultra-wide-angle camera, or the camera features might not be deal-breakers for me, I could definitely see folks who would buy the phone just for those features. And for regular consumers, the basic features of the phone are solid enough, you get 2 years local warranty here in Singapore, and have I mentioned how good looking the phone is? On the downside, I'm still not a fan of LG's UI, the front camera could be better, I wish the battery size could be a bit bigger, and stereo speakers would have been nice. But other than that, the LG V30 Plus gets a huge thumbs up from me. Thanks for watching my review of the LG V30 Plus. If you liked it, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks and see you guys on the next one.